Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest, and this episode gets pretty crazy. This is another day in the life of a mobile mechanic episode. My customer's car has been stuck at work all weekend long. It's Monday morning, I'm gonna head across town and see if I can get their truck running so they can drive it home from work. But on the way to work, I pulled off the exit and I noticed a car over on the shoulder smoking a ton. I just happened to bring some coolant with me because I was going to look at a coolant leak. So I decided to ask them if they needed some coolant. Here's what happened. See if I can see what it is. Maybe it's nothing super serious, and you guys can get it fixed. This should be open, safe to open. Well, that was fun. I'm sure it's a little blurry right now because it looks like the lens is all fogged up from all that antifreeze steam. I know my mouth is coated too. That engine was hot. They said it turned off by itself. I'm pretty sure that's on the audio. Uh, I was just gonna turn left at that light there and I saw that truck with a bunch of steam coming out. So I just pulled over to see if they needed coolant. Sounds like they knew they didn't, but I figured I'd try and help them out anyways. Their radiator was definitely just busted from overheating, but they overheated it the night before doing donuts. Um, so looks like it's just in bad shape. This video is sponsored by Vever. This is the Vever torque converter for the Harbor Freight Predator engine. This will fit the 212cc Predator engine. Now I don't have a Predator engine to put this on, so if you'd be willing to bring your go-kart to the Provo area, reach out to me at the email down below, and I'll see if I can put this on your go-kart for you in a different video. Check out the link in the description and the pinned comment if you're interested in this torque converter. Let me show it to you real quick, and then we'll get back to the video. This torque converter is made out of aluminum, stainless steel, and other lightweight materials. It even comes with this nice cover here. A torque converter will help your go-kart engine get more power by reducing the load on the engine. And if you're looking to upgrade your Predator 212cc engine, this is a great product to do so with. This is a 30 series go-kart clutch. This kart torque converter kit has a 3 quarter and a 5 8 drive clutch suitable for all engines with 3 quarter straight crankshaft. The 3 quarter drive clutch contains a 10 tooth sprocket for 40 and 41 tooth chains. This replaces a bunch of different part OEM part numbers. I'll put that in the description and the pinned comment as well. This torque converter clutch comes with everything that you need. It also comes with an aluminum mounting plate, a drive belt, a 10 tooth sprocket, full mounting hardware, fully equipped. Get it and you're good to go. Check out the links again if you're interested. If not, back to the video. Thanks again to Vever. Well, now I had to pick up some more water and get over there and find this coolant leak. All right, well, here we are. I just found this truck. It took me forever to find it in this parking lot. Um, I literally, behind me is this road I came straight in on. I turned left there and checked out every parking lot around this building, except for this one. All I had to do was go straight. It was on the right right here. So I'm gonna hop out and look at this. It's got a coolant leak somewhere. I've already got warmed up with looking at coolant leaks this morning. So uh, taste antifreeze is already in my mouth. Let's go take, let's go take a look at it. All right, here we go. POV cam. Here's the truck. Uh, Last time you saw this truck, it wasn't starting. It's starting now, I'm sure. It drove here. But after I actually got the truck running, the customer texted me while I was at lunch and wanted me to check out some other things. One of which was some leaking coolant, a leaking transmission, and a clanking sound in the rear when they shifted from drive to reverse. That ended up being the rear differential itself, which just has a ton of wear in it and a ton of play. I can't do anything about that other than maybe service it, but a thicker fluid or something may quiet that down. It's not taking care of the issue. And they wanted me to look at the coolant as well. So when I looked at the coolant, they said it looked kind of dirty. I noticed oil. It's still here. That's a milkshake. And a couple of days later, the customer, customer texts me back and says, hey, your truck stuck here. That was last weekend. That was on the weekend a couple of days ago. And supposedly all the coolant leaked out from somewhere, maybe a busted hose or something, but the customer's not sure. 
I brought a gallon of coolant with me to fill this up, but I'm just going to use water. I'm going to fill this up with some water and see where that leak's coming from. I've got a pressure test kit. In case it isn't leaking by itself, I can pressurize this system and see where that leak's coming from. My guess, though, is it's probably got a bad head gasket from the oil alone. So this is probably just going to be something like getting it running to get home. Literally, the last time I talked to this customer, I was giving them a quote on how much it would cost to put different engines in here. So I don't think this is a surprise to anybody. It just came a little sooner than expected. Looks like there's a lot of moisture up here. I'm gonna start around here. Okay, uh, radiator hose over here is fine. And there's not actually any coolant marks on any of the plastic around uh, the sides of the radiator here, which would indicate like a broken radiator or hose on this side, uh, nothing down even on this hose either. So if it wasn't right there, which it doesn't look like it should be, let's see if it's mostly in near the back of the front. Mm, looks like it was on mostly the front. Let's check this side. Yeah, so we even have some up here, like on this oil fill cap somehow. A lot down there, but relatively dry back here, like where the starter is and near the rear of the engine. So it looks like it all came down the front here. The fact that it got up here though, tells me that it's leaking from up here uh, since water doesn't go uphill. Now I believe that's as much as I'm gonna be able to tell for now. So let's get some water bottles and fill this up. All right, I've actually just gotta find a water spigot somewhere and get some water. So I'll be right back to this spot. All right, so I was driving past this garden here which is just around the corner from that truck. And there was a garden worker, the groundskeeper, who let me borrow some water. I didn't want to film inside their building because it was a work building. So I just uh, grabbed that real quick. It is a workplace though. That's why there's so many people here. I was a little confused. Here we are again. Easy peasy. All right, got that water. That took all that. All right, well that should take up at least half the room in the system. Let me see if I can see air coming out now. If I can't get like air coming out with my pressure test kit or some fluid and just see where that's at obviously, then I'll go get some more water. When you try and pressure test a completely empty system though, it takes forever to build the pressure and hard to find, so. So I just went ahead and grabbed a couple more water bottles and topped that off rather than going back inside. It was pretty close and I got it all the way up. Let's put one of these on and we'll pressurize it a little bit. See where that leaks at. Pretty simple from now on. Got to have water to get started. right here at the thermostat housing let me do that one more time the weird thing is though it looks like water's coming out of like this what is that is that supposed to be a hose uh, yeah where's that going wherever that goes down there's something underneath here <laughs> that's busted this hose right here that's the culprit see that rip i would have never found that without this pressure test kit let me pressurize it and see if I can show you what leak in here. There it is. Bingo, bingo. All right. 
I'm gonna go ahead and drain the radiator then. Oh, we don't want uh, water sitting in here, especially if it's gonna sit tonight. I don't know who, I mean, I'm sure I can just find that hose. Uh, it's just a mangled up mess. I just need to find that diameter hose. So let me just run to the parts store, get a couple gallons of antifreeze for this and let this drain its water that I just filled it up with while I go do that. This doesn't mean it's gonna be drivable for long. It may still have a head gasket issue, but that may be what popped that too if it got real hot. Okay, I'm not gonna put that in all the way so that it can drain without suction. Um, let me put my gloves on and take that hose off though. I'll just take it with me. All right, there's that other hose clamp at the bottom there. Oh man, that made me dizzy. I'm upside down, looking back towards my pocket like this, and I saw the mounds and it made me super dizzy. Like that. I thought I was about to fall into the sky. Maybe like this. Into it. Looks like a yes. Small turn, I don't care. That's not to do it. There it is. Okay, I got that off. Uh, where'd I put that other hose clamp? I'm not sure. Is it still on the thing? I usually set stuff up there. Oh, here it is. I was gonna say, but that's not flat. Cool, cool. Let's go get a new hose. All right, made it to AutoZone. Just gotta get a new hose. All right, here's that hose. Let's go uh, get this installed. I'm gonna have to cut that a little bit. It's a little long, but they can only sell it in foot long sections. What a peaceful place to work on a car. No one around a field behind you. Normally it's a parking lot. All right, got a new hose. You know that. Let's get it in. I think it was like that long. I'm not gonna cut it until I get it in there. It should be pretty quick. Just a couple of hose clamps. Perfect. Start with the upper one there. All right, I just got that new uh, hose in there and the hose clamps on nice and tight. I didn't video it. My leg was falling asleep because I had to lean over really hard to see this bottom one and use both hands because uh, obviously it was loose enough where backspin in this wasn't on. Uh, it wasn't ratcheting, so uh, I just used both hands to do that, but that took a couple minutes, no big deal. All right, air cleaner's back on. That's a job well done. What a view. Well, there you go. After a morning's work, I got this truck back on the road. The customer was super grateful and everybody was super helpful over there where I was working at. This was a perfect job. Everything went well. If you love the video, subscribe and leave a comment down below and a thumbs up. And I'll see you on the next episode.